Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 23rd of October 2011. In the last 24 hours we have been recovering from the M flare that occurred yesterday and the large CME that resulted that could be affecting the Earth with geomagnetic storms in two or three days time. Towards the end of the video I'm going to ask your opinion on something. Please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section below or send me a private message with your opinion. But first our trivia question. Once again I've blown up an object that should be familiar to you. Can you tell what it is? The answer will be given at the end. Looking at the GOES X-ray plot we see that we've had one M flare and six C flares in the last 24 hours. The M flare was from the West Limb, region 1914. Some of the C flares were from the same location but also from the new region coming over the Northeast Limb, region 1330. You'll notice that the M flare is actually a long duration event and went on for nearly 12 hours. This is typical of something that is an aftermath of a coronal mass ejection, so we should expect a spectacular coronal mass ejection from an event like this. So let's take a look at the active regions and see what else has been going on. We have eight officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment, and one new region that's just emerged in the northwest. We'll start in the northwest with region 1326. Region 1326 is approaching the northwest limb. It also seems to be decaying, so I don't think it's going to have very much influence on space weather conditions for the next few days. The new region popping up to its south and east so it looks much more substantial and may grow quickly, but there again it's going to go over the northwest limb in a couple of days' time, so probably isn't going to affect us very greatly. Region 1324 is the largest region on the disk, and it doesn't seem to have really changed a great deal apart from spreading out a little. Region 1328 to its north and west has decayed quite significantly and I do not think it will be long with us. In the northeast we have region 1325 and the newly numbered region 1330. Region 1325 doesn't seem to have uh, changed a great deal in the last 24 hours. However, 1330 is rotated onto the disk so we're getting a better view of it now. And it seems to have ver two very large spots, but not very much else. So we'll have to see how this develops over the next few days to see whether it's going to produce any activity. It has produced at least one sea flare already. Lastly, we turn to region 1327 in the southwest. This region too has not really changed a great deal in the last 24 hours. There may be some decay around the leader spot, but there may be some development around the trailing spot. So this is probably a push. So now let's take a look at the continuous development of these regions using the magnetic and sunspot movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here I think it would be interesting to follow the emergence of that new region in the northwest and see if you can see similar uh, emergencies beginning elsewhere on the disk, which would forecast the formation of new active regions. I've made up three movies of the development of this flare that occurred yesterday. The first is in the transition region, the Helium-2-304 line, which is about 50,000 degrees. The second is in the uh, Iron-9 line at 171 angstroms, which is about 600,000 degrees. And the third is in the Iron-20 line, which is at 131 angstroms, and is about 10 million degrees. It would be interesting to compare the development of the flare in each of these temperature regimes and try to see what the relationship between them are. At the end I've created a fourth movie which is a combination of the transition region movie and the high temperature flare movie. And you can actually see how the various loops appear at different temperatures with respect to one another. The question is are the high temperature and low temperature loops intermixed with one another, i.e. are they just heating at the different loops at, by different amounts? Or is one the cooling of the other, i.e. you create a hot loop and as the energy source is turned off, does it cool and start to fall down? This is a question that has been bugging researchers for many years. See what impression you get. It's not easy, is it? Now let's take a look at the coronagraph data to see the coronal mass ejection that resulted from this uh, event. First starting with the uh, high resolution field of view from the LASCO C2 instrument, you can see there's a massive eruption off of the northeast limb. And here is a still frame of that showing the complexity of the event. Then we'll take a look at the larger field of view C3 instrument. And you can see that the event spreads over a very large area of sky. If you go to the side of the sun and look at this uh, event from a different angle, 
from the Stereo B spacecraft, we can see that there is a beautiful structure to this event. Notice that it is at very high latitudes, and so if it does come the Earth's way, we will only be brushed by the southern edge of it. From the ACE data, we can see that the solar wind velocity has dropped below 300 kilometers per second, which is very low, and the temperature and the density are also extraordinarily low. So there's almost no solar wind out there at the moment. The high energy electron flux at geosynchronous altitudes is remaining relatively stable. And we have a proton event at long last. This obviously comes from the M flare from yesterday and it's been steadily building over the last 24 hours. The auroral zone looks very much like it did yesterday, so it hasn't uh, developed very much. And the KP index is extraordinarily quiet, varying just between 0 and 1. NOAA issued a low level radio blackout warning yesterday as a result of the M flare, but it has already been cancelled. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B8 level, the sunspot number is at 164, the radio sun intensity is at 168 solar flux units, with a solar wind speed of 281 kilometers per second and a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are very quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are a certainty, M flares are likely, and X flares are possible. The sunspot number will remain high, CMEs will remain likely, the solar wind speed will remain low, and a geomagnetic storm is beginning to be possible, but probably not in the next 24 hours, but perhaps in the next 48. From the composite coronal image, we can see that we have a small region due over the northeast limb in the next day, and a day after that there should be a modest sized region coming over the northeast limb as well. Once again, the thing to note here is that the northern hemisphere has active regions all the way around the sun, whereas the southern hemisphere only seems to have regions covering about half of the uh, hemisphere. The other half looks rather dead. This is interesting from a solar cycle point of view. I mentioned that I wanted uh, your opinion on something. The issue is that I've been asked to write six papers for the American Meteorological Society explaining space weather. And I don't have the time to do it if I'm doing these um, bulletins as well. So what I was planning to do was to do the short um, news break type uh, articles when there is something important going on, like an interesting M flare, an X flare, a comet, or a large coronal mass ejection. And then once a week, probably at weekends when there's more time, do the full um, description like I'm doing now, perhaps even a bit augmented from this. And I want to see whether that's something you, you folks would like. So please leave your comments in the comment section below or send me a private message. I'll take a poll to see what the answers are and uh, see what I should do. Oh, the trivia question. This picture is something very familiar to you. Let me uh, pan back a little bit and see if that gives you a better hint. No? Well, let me turn it around and show you the whole object. Yes, it's the belts of Jupiter. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.